What is the number one reason why people quit too soon? You know, the journey, the human journey can be tough. Uh, we, we have fundamental needs that need to be met, but we also have dreams, life improvements, uh, life dreams improvements, New Year's resolutions that if we made them a year ago or six, seven months ago, hopefully we're, we're, we're making some breakthroughs on that as well. Um, but really, when you think about this for a moment, some of the greatest improvements, leaps and advancements we've ever experienced here in our lifetime or even in history, they happen through much hardship, suffering, lots of pain, trailblazing, and lots of failure along the way. But most of all, the, the, the leaps and advance, advances that we have experienced, it, it happened because someone didn't give up. Someone didn't give up. And that's really important. When life goes sideways, sickness, job loss, um, loss of a loved one, I don't, I don't know, I really don't know how people could do it without God. Life's tough. It's frustrating. It's disappointment. It's disappointing. It's, it's filled with a lot of hurt and pain. And I really don't know how people do it without God. This is why it's so important. This is why our spiritual journey is so important in the human journey. Our faith journey. Our spiritual journey. This is why it's so important in the human journey. The human journey is tough without God. And that's like going on a hike out in the wild. There are essentials you really need to bring in order to enjoy your hike, in order to, uh, to safely navigate through new, new territory and terrains. And there are essentials you really need to bring along the way. So let's face it, we can often get tired and frustrated and really just quit too soon. Quit too soon. So what is, what is the one essential you need to not quit too soon? To not quit too soon. You know, uh, I want to start with the story today. Not, uh, no one would have expected or would have picked her to win by the way she started the race. It was the annual elementary school cross-country race, and my daughter Beth uh, started dead last. It was bad. It was, a, it was a bad sight to see. But there was an excitement in the air as parents, students, and teachers, they gathered to cheer the runners on. I remember it was, it was huge. It was a big day. There was a nervous energy um, just waiting to be, re be released. Uh, and sure enough, when the starting gun went off, the young runners, they all took off in a sprint. All of them took off in a sprint. All of them except Beth. She started her race with a moderate jog. And as a result of star starting it as a moderate jog, she started in dead last. Onlookers might have thought she had no hope of winning. She was in last place in a race with at least 50 other kids, 50 other young kids who were all excited about running. Uh, but, but unbeknownst to those who were watching her from afar, Beth had a plan. She had a plan that gave her hope. She had a plan that gave her hope. You see, before the race, I was talking with Beth, and I was thinking, you know what? If you know little kids, they get excited. They get excited. And they start running. They start going. I, I told Beth that the majority of these third graders, they're going to get up. When the, when the starting gun happens, they're going to take off in a sprint. And you're also going to be tempted to do the same thing. You're going to be tempted to go just as fast as the rest of them. And it's, it's hard. It's hard not to be in front. It's hard to feel like you're dead last. And the temptation is, I got to go faster. I don't want to be the last one. And so I said, don't do it. Don't do it. Um, take your time. Jog. Save your energy for the end of the race. A cross-country race is too long to sprint the whole way. How many of you know that? That's truth. You can't sprint it the whole way. It's, it's too long. And everyone who sprints at the start of the race, they're going to get tired at some point. But if you jog most of the way, save your sprint for the last part of the race, you're going to pass the majority of these kids and probably finish, finish okay. You'll probably feel pretty good at the end of the day. And while it didn't look pretty, it didn't look pretty at the start of the race, uh, but then it all happened. As the sprinters began to slow down, Beth, Beth began to make her move, passing each one of them one at a time. And it was just beautiful. It was beautiful to watch. I was like, whoa. It was like a slow motion miracle. It was like I'm watching her. Everyone's taken off. She's in last place, and it just doesn't look good. But I knew she had a plan, so I wasn't dejected. I, wasn't even, I didn't even yell at her. I didn't even do anything. I was just, you know, just cheering her on. But then you just start seeing her one at a time. Boy, that was just beautiful to watch. She was working her plan. And when she passed the last goal, she began to sprint. And it was all but certain that she would, she would take first place among the girls. But along the way, what was kind of cool was she also, also passing a lot of the boys. 
along the way. In fact, uh, uh, by the time she, she, she got to where she was at before the last part of the race, um, there were only two boys in front of her. And in fact, when Beth entered the last stretch of the race, uh, we were actually elated with joy because she took third overall in this race. And it was just a joy as a parent to see her because she was not athletic. It wasn't her thing, but she did. And on that day, Beth ran her race with the hope that she would finish well, and she did. She did. Uh, which one, really, I want to bring up this point is that when we're filled with hope, when we're filled with hope, when you're filled with hope, you are filtering life, its challenges, its obstacles and opportunities with an optimistic mindset based on the expectation of a positive outcome. When you're living with hope, you're expecting something good's going to come out of this. You're expecting something good is going to come out. For Christians, our hope for the future should rest on God's redemption plan for humanity. God has a plan for us. God has a plan for humanity. And we have to believe that in every situation that God has not stopped working his plan. God has not stopped working his plan. Our hope is the expectation that God's plans, his redemptive plans, can never be thwarted, cannot, cannot be uprooted. Our hope is the expectation, desire, and feeling that something positive is going to happen no matter what. Everybody say, no matter what. No matter what, something positive is going to happen out of this. Something because in him, a glorious future has already been secured for us through the cross. A glorious future. A, gl a, a glorious future, Jeff, has already been secured for you because of what Jesus did over 2,000 years ago. Yeah, I think so. That's worth, that's worth jumping up and down. Now, actually, I don't jump very high, but, but you know what I'm saying. A glorious future tomorrow has already been secured for you because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross over 2,000 years ago. That, that helps me with my struggle today. That helps me with my burden today. That helps me when life gets hijacked, when life gets turned around. Is, is I've got to remember that God is still working his plan for my life. Not just my life, but humanity's life. I have to believe... There's a, there's a great promise in Joel chapter 2 where it talks about in the Old Testament, God says that one day he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. He says your sons and daughters will prophesy. I mean, he's talking about a time of a restoration where he's going to deal with everything that's wrong in our lives and make it right. I mean, think about this. When I think about sometimes, you know, life can be filled with just mean people. How many of you can know that? It's, I mean, it's true. I used, it just can be mean. And sometimes you you see the way people treat each other at times, and, and it's, we live in a very conflicted world. You know what I mean? And I'm going, Lord, if you're going to come, pour out your spirit. We need it. As, as a country, we need it. As a people, we need your spirit to come and fill those places where people are hurting and they're acting out against each other. And, and we need your spirit, Lord, and you, you promised that. And so when I see all this conflict happening in the world, I'm resting in God's promise. I'm believing that God still has, has secured a glorious ending for us through the cross. I have to believe that. That's, that gives me hope for my, my current circumstances. I have to believe that. I don't know how a person can go through the human journey without God. I'm still trying to figure that out. I don't know how people do this without God. Hope is what enables us to keep going and not give up. That's a gift. To be able to keep going and not give up. And to finish well, even, it, even when it looks like we didn't start very well or fallen dead last in a race. You didn't have a good start. Listen, if you don't want to be crushed by the things you're carrying right now, you need to be filled with hope. You need to be filled with hope. You need to be constantly filling yourself with reminders of this is how the day is going to end. If I only live today, you know what I need to get through this day? If this was my last day, I just need to know what's for dinner. Just tell me what's for dinner. If it's something good at the end, you know, where are we thinking what's for lunch? You know, what's, 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 you know how's this day going to end? I can, I can get through stuff knowing that hey, at the end of the day, this is going to happen. We were built for reward. We were built for this kind of reward. And, and so you have to figure out, you know, it, you may not understand, you know, how it's all going to figure out life-wise, and so just take one day at a time. Now, many of you know, I used to coach basketball, and so I, you, you hear me mention basketball a lot of times, but I, I get a lot of life lessons from the sport. I mean, for me, when I used to tell my kids, you know, you could be down by 20, 
And I, and I say, you know what we need to do? Don't worry about the 20 points. Just, just worry about the next possession. Get the ball back. Just get the ball back. So some of you need to hear this today. You, you know, life may be sideways even today right now. There's a lot of things that can feel overwhelming. Just, just get the ball back. Maybe it's just time to play some defense. Who knows? Just, just one possession at a time. May not be the full day. The full day may look, may look bleak for you today. Just win the next 10 minutes. <laughs> just win the next five minutes. Just get the next possession back. You got to believe God's going to work something out. God's going to work it out. If you don't want to be crushed by the things you're, you're carrying around, you need to be filled with hope. Why? Because without hope, you're going to quit too soon. Without hope, we'll quit too soon. How many of you could be just on the, on the cusp of something great? You've been working on something. You've been, you've been hoping that you, you've been working on something, but maybe you've, you've had a lot of failures the other way. That's, how, that's what it was like for Thomas Edison. So he had, to, he had to figure out 1,000 times what didn't work in order to find out what would work. And then he brought light to the world, electricity and light to the world. You know, sometimes it takes a whole bunch of failures in order to find out what God really wants you to do. You got to just think of it, it's tuition paid. It's tuition paid and you move on. You get to the next possession. Because so, sometimes, uh, you know, you have to figure out what doesn't work in order to find out what does work. But if you're going through something and you feel like quitting, I know this is God's word for you. Today. Don't quit. Don't give up too soon. Without hope, we'll give, up, we'll give up too soon. We'll give up too soon. I love the way David, when he wrote in Psalm 27, this is the scripture I want to share with you today. Um, I, I share with you that, that, you know, without hope, we'll quit too soon. It's, it's like when we, when we don't have hope, we're losing heart. And I love the way uh, David says this in Psalm 27. I actually want to read the psalm before I actually give you my verse here. Um, because this is such a great psalm. David's going through a really dark time in his life, a troubled time in his life. He, um, he's running from King Saul, uh, the guy who's in authority over his life right now. He already had, had been a shepherd for God. God had called his life. He knew someday he would be the next king of Israel. Samuel the prophet had already anointed David. So David had a call upon his life. And he tried to serve the current king as best he could, but the current king, King Saul, was very insecure and was doing everything in his power to try to kill David. So David was a fugitive. He's on the run, and he's literally scared for his life. It's during this time that he's on this run that he has to go and take his parents and take his parents into another kingdom just to keep them safe while he's running because he didn't want his parents to be involved in all that. And so he even finds himself in Philistine territory. The, the, the very country where Goliath was from. The, and he already had killed Goliath. And so he just finds himself running through the wilderness and running for his life. And then in Psalm 27, he says this. He says, this is the, the, the New Living Translation version. It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the one thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. You know, during this time, I just want to pause there for a moment. David's running. He can't even go to church. He can't even visit the temple. And he's just longing to be back in church again. He's longing to be back uh, at, at the temple in Jerusalem. Verse 5 says, For he will, he will conceal me there uh, when troubles come. He will hide me in a sanctuary. He will place me out of, the re out of reach on a high rock. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. At a sanctuary I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Do not turn your back to me, on me. Do not reject your servant. You have always been my helper. What a wonderful thing. Even while he's running, there's, there, there's a bit of truth that is just convicted in his heart. Lord, you've always been my helper. You've always been my, this is the kind of relationship he had with his God. He, Lord, you've always been my helper. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me, O oh God of my salvation. Even my, if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. Teach me how to live, O oh Lord. Lead me along the right path, for my enemies are waiting for me. Don't let me fall into their hands, for they accuse me of things I've never done. With every breath, 
They threaten me with violence. But verse 13 says, Yet I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I'm here in the land of the living. Now in the New King James Version, I like the way he, it says it here. It says, I would have lost heart. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You see, part of hope is, is believing no matter what, that one day, one day, one day I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It's believing that. It's believing that. You see, without hope, you'll miss seeing what you could actually accomplish and become in God's wisdom, strength, and power. I mean, without hope, without hope, well, if we quit too soon, we're going to miss seeing those things, what God could actually do in our lives. For without hope, if we quit too soon, we forfeit the vital role God needs you and I to both fulfill in our lifetime here on earth. There's a vital role God has called you to fulfill here on earth. And if you quit too soon, you'll forfeit it. You see, all of this, at times he's building, he's building things in our lives. He's, building, he's laying foundations for us, for the things he, he wants to do in you and through you. How many of you know that God wants his life to be displayed in you? And God wants his power to work through you. God wants his life to be displayed in you and his power to work through you. But it's not a microwave thing. <laughs> We go through times. We go through trials. We, I mean, it's, so, it, it's such a wonderful thing when you know that you know that no matter what, God's plans are not going to be thwarted. How do we get to this place? I mean, it's, it's, a, I mean, it's, it's constant. We've got to continue to feed our, our faith, feed our hope. But oftentimes, it's, we, we look back and we see, man, most people that can say that, they probably have gone through a trial. And they see how, they've seen how God has delivered them from that trial. Man, my God has been faithful to me in the past. Won't he also be faithful to me in the future? Won't he also? Lord, you've always been my helper. Why would you, not, why would you stop helping me now? My God doesn't do things halfway. What, what he begins, he always finishes. He always finishes. Amen? He always finishes. So, so you see, when, when you're filled with hope, you're living life with the expectation that something positive is going to happen. You'll, you'll push yourself to keep going, keep lifting, keep pushing through to embrace all that God wants to accomplish in us and through us. When God is working through you, you won't want to quit because you're just going to have this hope-filled mindset that God's going to do something positive in almost every circumstance in life. I mean, that's, that's living a hope-filled life. It's, it may look bleak right now, but I have to believe that there's something positive in this. That, that, that what, you're, what I'm going through right now, it's not the last chapter that's supposed to be written. There's another chapter to be written. What you're, where, you're, what you, where you may be at right now, you have to believe there's another chapter yet to be written. We have to live. If we believe there's something good at the end, it's going to help us right now. If we believe there's something good at the end, it's going to help us right now. Right now. It means we're going to push, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. We're going to outlast you, enemy. <laughs> you have no idea who's fighting on our side. You have no idea who you're messing with. And it's not me. It's the God I serve. You have no idea who you're messing with. You touch my family, you have no idea who you're messing with. You touch my brother and sister in Christ, you have no idea who you're messing with. You messing with God's family, you have no idea who you're messing with. There's something living in every Christ follower that's going to last forever. Think about that. It's going to last forever. Cancer can never take that away. No sickness, no disease can ever take that away. No trial, no error. It doesn't mean that we don't go through trials, but there's something long-lasting and enduring that Christ is doing in each and every one of us because what he's done for us on the cross we keep pushing. We don't want to quit because Christ is living within us. It's, 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 it's believing that something positive is going to happen in almost every circumstance of life. Think of it this way. In your relationship with God, as long as God remains bigger than you are, there will always be hope beyond your abilities. If God is smaller than me, which he is, but if, if God is smaller than me, then I can step in the unknown believing that, okay, even though my logic has stopped here, I'm, I'm in a relationship with someone who's so, so much smarter with me. I've got to trust him with the details. I've got to trust him 
beyond my abilities, beyond my strength, my, 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 my weaknesses, or, or my, um, my wisdom. As long as God remains bigger than, than my, myself, there's always going to be hope beyond my abilities. The life of the Son residing in you, and the power of His Holy Spirit working through you, I mean, it's a, it's a special treasure. It's like, it's like that treasure um, that Paul talks about uh, in 2 Corinthians 4, 7, where he talks about the power of God. It's like, it's, like, it's, like earth, it's like treasure in earthly vessels, in clay, jars of clay. That's what it looks like. I mean, we're, we're like the dust of the earth. But, but in this relationship with God, it's like, it's like a special treasure still resides in us because his life is living in us. That gives us hope. That gives us hope because he lives. The power of the living God lives in you through Christ. He lives in all of us through Christ. I love 2 Corinthians 4, 7. We now have, through Christ, we now have this light shining in our hearts. But we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not ourselves. So when something powerful is happening and working through our lives, we don't get the credit. We say, that's God. It brings so much clarity because God could not do that through me. God cannot do that through, through, I'm just an earthly vessel, but through God, God can do anything. And it makes it very clear that, that the power and the miracle doesn't come from us, it comes from him, to his glory, to his glory. Our lives being filled with his presence and power until we are overflowing for the sake of others and the world we live in. It's what gives us reason to live with an optimistic mindset that God's plan for humanity and the world, it's, it's, gonna come, it's not going to be thwarted. I'm going to give you a word today. We serve a God who causes all things to work together for good. For those who love and who have been called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. We serve a God who causes all things to work together for good. To those who love him. To those who have been called according to his purpose. Well, most people in the world are running at a, at a rat race pace. Trying to ful fulfill their own plans. God is working out his redemptive plan for humanity. For all who would recognize they need to change the direction and start trusting him. You need to start trusting him. If you haven't been trusting him, you need to start trusting him. If you've been trusting him, if the weight of the world has been a lot, a lot, believe me, you can trust God for even more. You can trust God for even more. Trusting in Christ, trusting in Christ, and his redemptive plan for our lives is how God fills us with joy and peace so that we may overflow with hope. Why don't you just think about that for a second? Trusting in Christ and his redemptive plan for our lives. Trusting in Christ. That means if I hit a couple guys and I'm, and I'm getting ready to fall, I have to trust them that they're going to catch me. That's scary, right? It's scary to fall and think that, oh shoot, am I going to land on my back? Yeah, this is what God is calling us. Trusting in God, trusting in Christ, trusting in Christ and his redemptive plan for our life is how God fills us with joy and peace so that we may overflow with hope. Romans 15, 13 says this. This is the Apostle Paul speaking to the Roman church. He says this. May the God of hope, this is at the end of his, of his, of his letter to the Romans. He says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's a, that's a really key verse for our hope. May the God of hope. So he, we, we, we know God as the provider, as our healer. We know, we know God in a lot of ways. But, but really, when you get up Monday morning, address him as the God of hope. You are the God of hope. I recognize you this morning on Monday morning. I recognize you as the God of hope. You are the God of hope. You're the one I'm, pr I'm dressing my prayer. I'm writing my prayer on this, on this letter. I'm addressing it to the God of hope this morning. You are the God of hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Understand his joy means being able to find life, give life, and come alive in a life-draining world, life world. It means all those things. His peace means to be able to, to find a place of refuge, tranquility, and health, wholeness, and well-being in a conflict-filled world. You know what drains us of hope? It's pain and suffering. It's, it's conflict in the world. These things we're constantly battling uh, in our lives today. It's, it's pain. It's, it's suffering. It's, it's conflict in the world. Yet joy addresses the pain. 
You can go through a lot of pain and suffering if, you're, if you have joy. You may not realize it. Happiness depends upon what happens, but joy arises from a heart that feels loved. Just feels loved. It, 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 not, it is priceless to know that God loves me. It is a priceless thing when you know that God loves you. You can go through a lot. That joy can come against that pain in so many ways. Just pause for a moment. Is there a God that loves you? When you think about the peace that God gives us in a very conflict-filled world, that's, that's something that doesn't come from the world. Jesus says in John chapter 14, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and peace of heart. And the gift I give is not a gift the world gives. <laughs> so don't be troubled or afraid. Peace that comes from heaven is like nothing that, that the world can give you as peace. When you have joy and peace, when the Lord comes, and it's not something that happens to you, it's the Lord ministering to you. It's the Lord coming in a very personal way and, and just beginning to deposit. I'm going to give you joy in your pain and suffering. I'm going to give you peace. And it start, he starts depositing those things in your being. And, 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 and it starts overflowing until all of a sudden you just fill with hope. Man, I've got enough joy and peace. We're going to make it. I know we're going to make it. My God loves me. <laughs> and I've got peace in a very tur uh, turmoil world. We're going to make it. And it hasn't happened. We don't manufacture it. It comes by the power of the Holy Spirit. Joy and peace are the deposits of a loving relationship with God, the Father, through Christ. The one who faithfully reminds us that there is hope beyond our own thoughts and imagination, strengths and abilities, because he dwells and lives within us. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, God desires to fill all who would put their faith and trust in him with joy and peace until they are overflowing with hope. Hope is the overflow of joy and peace. Hope is the overflow of joy and peace. Hope is what comes alive in, in us and brings life into our being. When the Lord himself fills us with his joy and peace until we are overflowing, this, this is huge. You're going to be able to find something positive in almost every circumstance in life. Think about that gift. Being filled with joy and peace that's overflowing with hope, that, that gives you a superpower. A superpower to be able to find something positive that's going bad at work. You know what? I can find something positive there because I know it's not the last chapter to be written. You're going through maybe a turmoil in your marriage. I'm here to give you good news today. It's not the last chapter of your marriage. You're experiencing turmoil in maybe, maybe work or family or stuff that's going on. It's not the chapter to be written. There's, God's, God hasn't abandoned you. He hasn't abandoned you. So let me give you a simple tip to, for, for today and just think about tomorrow morning. Ask and trust this. Here's a simple tip. Ask and trust the Lord to fill you daily with the hope that God's redemptive plan for your life is not going to be thwarted. God, I need to remind, be reminded that you have a plan for my life. That in the middle of my confusion, my God has a plan. My God has a plan. In the middle of your confusion, God has a plan for your life. He wants to fill you with joy and peace until you're overflowing with hope. It has to be embedded in this truth that Jesus Christ is Lord. It's not just a plan that's coming for me. It's his plan. It's the one who's, at, who's on the top tier of management. It's him. No one can subvert what God says is going to happen. It has to come from him. It's embedded in the truth that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. One day, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's a day that's coming. That is a day coming. Being filled with hope is, is about living out our daily lives in the presence of the one who is the ultimate source of our hope. It's not so much about getting something, uh, or about getting something, but letting someone, someone minister to us, the Lord himself filling us with his joy and his peace. I want to encourage you, open your heart to him today. Even right now, ask him for the grace to be more aware of his presence and his desire to fill you with his joy and his peace overflowing into hope. When you learn to do this daily, it's going to change you. It's going to be transformed. You're going to avoid quitting too soon. Wow! You're going to avoid quitting too soon. You're going to become the kind of person who's able to find something positive in almost every circumstance in life. Here's how we're going to close today.
I just want you just to just we're going to just close our eyes today. And this is again, I, I just want you to have a moment with the Lord. Let the Lord just minister. Take a moment to minister to you. He wants to touch you right now. He wants to fill you with joy. He wants to remind you how much he loves you today. And in this moment, as you're just spending this time with the Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sing this song. And you're going to, if you want to just sing it with me, it can be very, uh, I believe the, the Holy Spirit can do something as we just sing this song. It's, it's, it's a familiar song. It's a, it's a song maybe some of you have sang. If you don't know it, it's really easy to learn. But I want you to think about this song today, and I want you to think about this song maybe perhaps during the week. If you encounter something, to be reminded that there's something positive to be found in this. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Father, I, I pray for my brother and sister today. I pray for their context, their current life context right now. I, I may not know all the details of what's going on in their life, Lord. May not know all the struggles, the pain, or the conflict, but I do know that today, specifically, you want to deposit joy and peace into the core of their being. And so I pray, Father, would you come in the name of Jesus and minister to their context right now. Remind them, Lord God, that they are valued before you, that you love them, and that even though that, that their circumstances uh, can't change how much you love them, Lord, but you can, the, 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 their, their happenings can't change what's, what you're doing right now, Lord, that your joy would just come right now and fill them in the middle of their circumstances, Lord. That regardless of their circumstances, that you would come and fill them with your joy and your peace by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Lord. Remind us today, Lord God, that when we are in your presence, we receive you. We receive your strength. We receive your wisdom. We restrain what we need in the middle of our circumstance. I pray, Lord, in the middle of the confusion, remind your people today, my brother and sister today, Lord, that the chapter they're in right now, it's not the last chapter. There's another chapter to be written. So, Lord, I just pray, would you take each of them by the hand, Lord? Remind them how much you love them. Remind them that you're the God of hope that desires to fill them with your joy and peace until they're overflowing with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. If that's you today, just lift your heart to the Lord. Lift your hand and say, Lord, that's me. I want to receive. I want to be open to your joy and your peace, Lord. I want to be filled with hope. Lord, I want you to come against that negative spirit in my life. In Jesus' name, Lord. Help me to find something positive. Give me your grace and strength, Lord, to walk in your strength so that your life may display it in me and your power may, uh, may work through me. Lord, I don't want to quit too soon. I don't want to forfeit all that you're trying to do in me and through me, Lord. I want to be able to keep going even when life gets hard. I don't want to be a quitter, Lord. But I can't do it in my own strength. I can only do it in your strength and in your power today. Help me to walk Help me to walk in your strength and assurance, in your love today, Lord, in Jesus' name. I know that you're a God in whom I don't have to jump through hoops to be accepted, that you sent your son to die upon the cross so that I could have a relationship with you based upon the merits of Jesus Christ. And I thank you for that today. Thank you for that today. For some of you, you may be listening to this message today. You need to know that that for some of you that have not received Christ, if you have to receive Christ first for his joy and peace to come. If you have not made a decision for Christ, I want to encourage you to make that decision today. If you want a greater measure of um, 
the, the spirit to come and rest upon you today, the spirit to come and fill you, then continue to just deepen your faith in Christ. Continue to, to believe God that his plans can't be thwarted. It may be hard right now because of your situation, but know that God loves you and he's not going to abandon you today. In Jesus' name. We're going to say this prayer together for those of you that may have not received Christ to, in your life or that you want to go a little bit deeper in your relationship with Christ, just one step closer to God. Can we just say this prayer together? Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I've blown it so many times. I know I've done things that haven't pleased you. And for that, I, I say I'm sorry. I ask for your forgiveness believe that you died for me to pay for my sins and that you were resurrected that I may live a brand new life. I invite you into my heart. I ask for your spirit to fill me that I may live a life that is pleasing to you. Change me today, Lord, and help me to live a life that is pleasing to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, may your hands be upon this people, Lord God. Your grace resting upon you today. Hear the word of the Lord. The Lord's grace is upon you today. In the things you're going through, even right now, in your context, God's grace is present. He's filling you now. He's making a deposit of joy and peace so that it, that joy and peace can go with you throughout your week because he will, you will wake up tomorrow morning and he will remind you by the power of his Holy Spirit that he is the God of hope in your life. He is the source of your hope. So that you'll be able to keep going and not quit too soon. You've got a place that God is calling you to occupy in this world. Oh, may by the power of the Holy Spirit, may his grace and his peace and his mercy rest upon you that may you may fulfill all that God is calling you to do. Not in your power, but in his power and his strength today. In Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen. Know that God loves you. Your God loves you. Your God loves you. He's not going to abandon you. He's right with you. He's right with he knows our He knows our weaknesses, and he wants to be your strength. He wants to be that, 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 that person in your context that, that just is there with you the whole time. You don't have to do this alone. And here's the thing. God's plans cannot be thwarted. You have to believe God's got a plan for your life, and it's not going to be thwarted. May you find hope and peace and a positive outcome, whatever you're going through today and this week in your life, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. God bless you. If you said that prayer today, maybe you said it for the first time, let us know. Go to ColumbiaLifeChurch.com if you're listening online. Love to be able to uh, journey with you in this as well. You've made the best decision for your life today. May God fill you with hope today as well. I'm going to pray over, uh, we're going to dismiss in a moment. I'm going to pray over, pray over our offering in just a moment. Hey, just remind you, in a couple weeks, uh, one announcement in particular uh, we're going to have a church work day. We'd love for you to kind of be a part of it on Sunday, August 29th. We've got to get things ready for the seasonal change that will be coming up, and we'd love for you to be a part of that. Um, you know, the Spirit came upon God's workers as well as they worked with their hands and they worked with things to get things done, and so we're just believing God's Spirit to help us get ready for the church. We believe God has some great things planned for his people, for his church, for this community, and we've got to get things ready. We believe our Lord's coming again. We're going to operate with hope and peace and, and strength and believe that God is going to use this for his purposes in Jesus' name. Let me close in prayer. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for being our God. I thank you, Lord, for our prayer partners, our financial partners, our ministry partners, for our church family. Lord, because we could not do the work of the ministry without you. It is, it is humbling and it is a privilege to be able to do this with such great friends. Lord, I just pray you'd bless our friends and our families today, all of our partners today. And uh, as we just get ready to give uh, as a body, Lord, as a church family, Lord, I pray today that your blessing would come and rest upon each and every person here today, Lord, that you'd, you would bless their lives. We, we recognize that everything about us, who we are, what we have, our supply, it all comes from you. And so, Lord, as we give unto you today, Lord, would you bless um, our, our partners, Lord? Would you bless them in the area of finances, Lord? Jobs, businesses, Lord God, would you, would you give them overflowing grace, Lord, in their lives. Bless their offering 30, 60, 100 fold. Continue to be a supply so that they can continue to be a blessing in the lives of others and give them a great afternoon, 
a great week. Lord, I pray you'd bless them and keep them. Make your face shine upon them and be gracious to them. Lift up your countenance upon them. Give them peace. Give them hope. Give them love. Give them mercy. Give them favor this week, Lord, as we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen, amen. I hope you have a great Sunday, great lunch. Have a great week and live with hope. Amen? Amen. amen. God bless you.